Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Raleigh in the state capitol. We are joined by Jason Sane. He is a member of the House of Representatives. He is chair of finance. And, sir, the last couple of years, we've seen tremendous tax reform. Uh, this year's budget, first time we're at pre-recession levels, which must be somewhat gratifying. Give us a sense how you've been able to engage in such dramatic tax reform and still get us back to pre-recession levels. Well, it's been a lot of hard work. No doubt. And, and my colleagues in both the House and Senate have done a great job at understanding what our, the problems we faced. We had unemployment you know, at 11, 12 percent in different places in the state. Uh, we've got that down very low. We've paid back our unemployment debt to the federal government. So that helped spur business to invest in the economy here in North Carolina and just getting our policies right, cutting taxes right. where we needed to and showing to business community that, hey, you can grow your business here, whether you're already here or you want to come to North Carolina. Right. And we've done that. So we know the tax Taxes have come down, although some taxes have spread out, so right. I guess arguably have gone up, but it's it's a little more complicated than it that. It is more complicated. But I do want to get a sense, as one is cutting taxes, how does one ensure that you don't create budget holes, especially right. when you finally have gotten back to pre-recession levels? Well, I think it takes a pragmatic approach. You know, you can't run session and 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 tax reform as, as YOLO, you only right. live once. Right. You've got to be a, a very measured response and understanding that it's a marathon versus a sprint. Nice. And you start you start adjusting the tax rate uh, in such a way and bringing it down that you make up for it in other ways. We still right. have needs. We've got to fund our schools. We've got to fund our roads. We've got plenty of needs that we have to fund. But at the same time, you find a way to to get away from the roller coaster that we had in budgeting. And that's the, the whole purpose of tax reform. And North Carolinians have seen it in, in just a way that that's just about right. right. You know, it's, it's not too high. Not, not right. too cold. It's just about right. Let's talk about the corporate tax rate yeah. because that is one where we see tremendous reform. Right. The corporate tax rate in 2013 essentially was about 7%. Right. Going down, it could hit 3% in 2017. Right. Now, as a someone who might be a, a running a corporation, that's gratifying yeah. indeed. But when you're getting to that level, how do you then incentivize behavior, mm -hmm. presuming one wants to use the tax code to incentivize behavior? Right. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, when, when, when corporations look and they say, hey, we can we can at least make our tax burden less. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other effect of that is, is that they're coming into the state. They're employing more people. Those people are, are contributing to the economy. They're, they're buying more. Right. Uh, they're, they're building homes. They're, they're, they're growing our economy in such a way that, uh, again, we, we don't uh, overrun the budget, we don't overrun our needs, but it's a, a nice gradual approach. But but as corporations see that, they say, you know, I don't have to worry about all this overregulation. That's another key part of that, is making sure that we, we're not overregulating once the corporations get here. Here's a challenge, though. As you know, North Carolina has been looking mightily to bring in an automobile manufacturer. Right. There are sites just yearning yeah. to create those types of opportunities. Recently, Volvo mm -hmm. was deciding between North Carolina and South Carolina. And sadly, for North Carolinians, they picked South Carolina. Why? Again, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. But some folks have suggested that that occurred because North Carolina didn't have the incentive programs right. that South Carolina had. Now, the flip argument is, but wait, we have low corporate taxes, so right. we don't need incentives. Yeah. But how do you tell that story? Well, well you've got to have. You, you're not just serving a you know, one entree. You're, you, you've got to serve the sides and and the and the and the uh, uh, you know the right. starter and the exactly. appetizer and, and the hors d'oeuvres and, 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 and everything and dessert. And that's what we're competing with. We've got to be competitive on all levels. Uh, from the House side, this session you saw the, the House Finance Committee source out our economic development package. Uh, unfortunately, got to the Senate and waited for a long right. time. And so it, during that time frame, uh, companies were making decisions and and we missed out. And so we finally had that package correct. And so it's out there as a tool for our Commerce Department to use. So you, you've got low corporate taxes, you've got the incentive program. That is that is fair. And we don't give away the bank, but we right. at least make it attractive to come here. Why is it with regard to car manufacturers, we can't seem to get someone it's, it's in amazing. North Carolina? We lose it to South Carolina, we lose it to Georgia, BMW, wherever. BMW, yeah. Toyota, Honda, Mercedes, Hyundai, Nissan, Volkswagen, they're all everywhere through the South, yeah. not Car North Carolina. And we're the right place. And look, we, we, we're a right to work state. Uh, we, we should be ideal for them. But again, Again, it's, it's been a kind of a delay, unfortunately, not, not necessarily from our side. Like I say, led the charge to do that, but right. but, but waiting too long, uh, I think we're now in a competitive place. So as the next opportunity arises, we're there. We've got the workforce. Right. We've got folks who are ready to go to work. Uh, we want those jobs. And so 
we're now saying to the world, hey, we're, we're, we now have the tools that we need, and, and look, we want you to come in here. But, so uh, we, we've, we've sweetened it just enough to, to be more competitive. I want to talk about another sweetener, allegedly, mm -hmm. purportedly, right. and that would be sweetening the pot here in North Carolina by improving infrastructure. Yes. And there is no doubt that both Democrats and Republicans are looking towards March right. to create that package of programs through the Connect uh, North Carolina bond. $2 billion bond mm -hmm. going to the voters in March, as I said. Give us a sense of putting that bond together. It was right. down from almost $3 billion. And why you believe, I believe you're a supporter, the voters should yes. say yes. Well, you know, because it's time to fund our critical needs. Mm -hmm. we, we have to reinvest in our infrastructure. You know, we, we've got a great state. But at the same time, we don't remain great if we don't reinvest in the things that we've already built. Uh, we have a wonderful university system. We've got a, a number of reinvestments in the university system. We've got a science center, uh, science building at, at UNC Charlotte, which oh, is yeah. close to my district. That's my alma mater. Uh, you know, making sure that we're doing that across the state. So one, uh, reinvesting in all of our public institutions uh, as far as the university system in, in some way, form, or fashion. Uh, so looking at that, growing our, 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 our uh, education mm -hmm. sector that way, being competitive there. Our parks and recreations, it's quality of life. Life. People want to spend time in a state that they love. We need to make sure that we've got that right as well. And then transportation. We, we've got uh, uh, plenty of opportunities with what we did too, uh, keeping in mind that we've now, uh, we, we will not rob the Highway Trust Fund. So we right. can fund future needs. But does the bond include transportation it dollars? It does not, but what we did there was by not taking away from that uh, Highway Trust Fund, we can now reinvest those dollars where they need to be reinvested. So the election's around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's in March. Yeah. Right. That's quick. It is. And I'm wondering if you can discuss with us the thinking about putting it on the March ballot, the bond, as opposed to giving voters some time to learn, to ruminate, to brew on the possibilities. Yeah, so there, there are different points of view in the House and, and Senate. Uh, some wanted to wait, let, the, let a bigger group of folks vote right. on that bond. Uh, this would also kind of incentivize for folks to come out and vote in the primaries. Where I, the presidential race was Exactly, so tying in the presidential well. race right. uh, means that there's gonna be a lot of interest. And since there's a lot of interest, I think that gives everybody an opportunity to have a say one way or the other, whether you support it or don't support it, um, you, you can be there and show up. And, and it's going to be uh, you know, a lot more participation. And I wonder, you think about the March primary, does that increase voter turnout? I mean, who knows what's going to happen on the Republican and or Democratic side. Right. On the flip side, are you going to be getting the polar opposites coming because that's who goes to presidential primaries? I'm trying to figure out who the electorate is. Well, and, for that. and, and we truly don't know, but right. I also think that, that with the issues that will be on the ballot, the bonds and the presidential election. Right. And this uh, political climate that we're in, uh, with so much interest in, the, in who the next president will be, but also what unaffiliated or you know your, your independent voters, right. what they may do. It's interesting you mentioned that. I saw a poll that was taken in September, um, and it suggests that unaffiliated voters were not so keen on the bond. Right. This was, the split was 39-51, mm -hmm. even in favor of holding the vote. There had been a poll back in June where the bond was leading 63-25. Of right. course, you know politics. The question and how it's worded can sure. just define what the response is. But do you have a sense of where the voters are and where they're going? I don't think we do. Not yet, because one, we haven't seen the advertising and the of promotion course. of the bonds. You know, at, at some point, it's just kind of a, it's out there in the ether. You, right. you know, we, we kind of talk about it, but we really don't know what it means. I think as folks actually take a deeper look to it, they'll see whether, then they can make that judgment call, whether this is the time to reinvest in our state. And I would say, you know, given the interest rates, what they are, right. uh, it's a wonderful time to do that. And we that have, helps having it in March. It, it absolutely you, it does. It passes in March. Yeah. Presumably the rates will be a little lower than November, where we might see might see an increase. Absolutely, less time to, or you know, more time to pay off uh, whatever those bonds, you know, ultimately right. end up being. So we we will see, but I, but I do think that the uh, but that the electric, if if shown what what is actually in the bond package, uh, and knowing what what folks really think are important in North Carolina, they'll see it as a need and reinvest. He is Jason Sane. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Okay. This is Charter Local.